Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. I'm Pastor Jacob, welcome to worship with us on this Easter morning on behalf of myself and the entire congregation of St. John's Lutheran Church in Sterling. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. A blessed Easter to you this day. May each day be filled with a keen awareness of God's love for you through Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Welcome to our Tri-Church Worship, where we are glad to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in community with our three churches, St. Paul, St. John, and Emmanuel. On behalf of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Sterling, Illinois, I, Pastor Michaela, welcome you to worship. It is a joy to be with you today as we sing our praises and shout alleluias to our Lord. If you remember, right before Lent began, we took the word Alleluia, wrote it on a piece of paper that was embedded with wildflower seeds, and buried it as a symbol that we would bury the Alleluia and not say it during the time of Lent so that it could ring ever more loudly and true when we said it on Easter. So today we have this plant that sprouted from those seeds, symbolizing the new life that we have in Christ and that we will have in the resurrection when we join in him. It is a great day. One other note about our worship life together today is that we will be giving thanks for our baptism. And so if you would like to get a little bit of water and have it near you, when we uh, celebrate the, the Thanksgiving of baptism, you could dip your finger in the water, mark the sign of the cross on your forehead, and uh, celebrate, remember your baptism. Maybe you sprinkle yourself or your family members with the water as well. We are glad to worship today with all of our symbols of new life and resurrection, and we are happy to sing Alleluia together. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Hopefully, where you are worshiping from today, you have access to ample water. We welcome you to remember your baptism. You are beloved of God this day and always. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. God of love and grace, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, friends who are young or the young at heart. Now is the time for worship that's especially for you kiddos. So come and gather around your screen a little closer. Today is a special day in worship where we get to celebrate Easter Sunday. It's a day where 
we are especially surprised at what Jesus has done. You should help me tell this story by looking surprised. Look at somebody next to you and give them a surprised face. We'll do it together on the count of three. On the count of three, you'll look surprised. One, two, three. Surprise! Maybe when you get surprised, your eyes get really big and you're excited. Maybe you were afraid of something that surprised you. That's what happens in our story today. People were looking to go see Jesus because he had died and they were going to go visit the grave where he was, the tomb where he was, his body was. But when they opened the, the tomb and they rolled the stone away, Jesus was gone and it was surprising and even a little scary because no one had ever come back from the dead before. But Jesus did. It's very surprising. We have lots of things that can be surprising and help us remember the story of Jesus, especially the butterflies, because butterflies surprise us too. They start out as just a wiggly little caterpillar, and a caterpillar couldn't fly, could it? No, so it's surprising that when it goes into its little cocoon, it comes out like a beautiful butterfly and it seems like it's gone and disappeared, but it's really coming back and beautiful and it can fly. And we use the butterfly to remind us of Easter and the surprise that Jesus is no longer dead, but living. So today, maybe you can make a butterfly and give it to someone you love. And it can remind you that God loves you and God is full of surprises. Let's remember that and end our time together in prayer. So take your hands and clap them together on the count of three. Well, I say, let us pray. Ready? One, two, three. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the surprises that Jesus came back for from the dead so that we can have new life too. Help us remember your love for us and share it with the world. Be with us this week and maybe help us see a butterfly and remember your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And the Lord of hosts will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. The Lord of hosts will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading for today comes from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, 
and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus's body. And very early on, the very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We shout this proclamation together as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through this past week, we celebrated and observed Holy Week. We journeyed with Jesus to Jerusalem and remembered the Last Supper. We mourned his death on a cross, and now we have arrived at the empty tomb. It feels like such a joyous day to tell the happy ending to our familiar Holy Week story. However, the gospel text for today doesn't quite end as you would expect. In Mark's gospel account, the story of Jesus and his disciples is not neatly tied up with a bow with Jesus appearing to his disciples and then gloriously ascending into heaven. Instead, the story has an open ending that leaves us with questions. We are left with a mystery of an empty tomb and women who are so amazed and terrified that they are shocked into silence. You also, when you hear this story, might be a little surprised or confused as well. These reactions help us connect with the feelings that the women would have had when they encountered it. This ending of the story invites us to feel what they felt when the expected was turned into the unexpected. 
as you heard in the text, after the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome do what they feel obligated to do. Out of love and devotion, they get spices and set out to anoint Jesus's body. They were just doing the next right thing. We do this too. After a loved one dies, we get their affairs in order, maybe go through their things. You just do what you have to do to honor them and take care of all that they left behind. Jesus left his body, and so the women are going to take care of just that. They set out on their task of anointing Jesus, his body, very early in the morning when the sun had just risen. I wonder if they had felt a sense of obligation and devotion and love, but also a little bit of dread. Perhaps they were thinking, let's just get this over with and close this chapter of our life. Yes, life was better with Jesus and we will still try to live out his teachings, but he is gone now. He was killed by Rome and the jealous religious aristocracy, just like so many other Messiah figures who threatened the powers of this world. We thought he was different, but I guess we will have to live on without him. At least we can offer this last act of love by anointing his body. But oh, who's going to move the stone away? Who will help us? Perhaps that was the conversation they had on their way to the tomb. Suddenly, when they arrive, they are not met with the expected defeat, but the terrifying surprise of something unexpected. They find the stone already moved away and a man inside the tomb It would have been quite a surprise. How could Jesus not be here? They had seen where he was laid. Perhaps you have had moments in your life when you are surprised or terrified or amazed when the expected turns into the unexpected. It could have been a moment when your boss says, please set up a meeting with me and you're definitely expecting bad news, but it turns out that you got a promotion or that something good is on the horizon. It's exciting and maybe even a little unsettling to face the new future with more responsibility. The women in our story were definitely unsettled to face the unexpected. They must have, have looks of, must have had looks of shock or horror on their face because the young man first says, do not be afraid. Don't be alarmed. Even though he's trying to comfort them, though, he still says something that's even more alarming. He says, Jesus, who was crucified and died, is not here. He has been raised from the dead. And he continues, go, tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Upon hearing this astounding news, the women flee from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they say nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now, it seems like the story can't continue or that they were not very courageous, but I think that their terror is understandable. Their expectations about death had completely been flipped upside down. Their reality is shattered. It is an important important distinction that their terror and amazement does not make them cowards. Instead, their reaction shows that they really do understand the magnitude of what has happened, of what God has done. They realize 
Jesus had, they realize that God has raised Jesus from the dead. They are stunned into silence because they're grappling with the reality of what they thought was dead is actually alive. God made it alive. The door that they thought was shut, God opened. The chapter that they thought was finished is still being written. And so it is with the gospel passage. The good news is still unfolding. The story of Jesus' resurrection, the story of God turning death into life is still being written. The passage ends with the women saying nothing to nobody. But here we are, 2,000 some years later, proclaiming Jesus is risen. The good news is somehow passed on, and now we are part of the story. It's all God's work. God faithfully continues the story. We don't have to rely on the faithfulness of the disciples, or rather their faithlessness, And we don't have to rely on our own faith that may waver. God's grace carries us through. God raised Jesus from the dead. And in Christ, God promises that one day we will be a part of the resurrection too. God's story of everlasting love is still unfolding. This means that God is not done with you or your story either. Even if you have doubts, even if you feel like giving up on God or on life or on love, God never gives up on you. God takes the expected and makes it unexpected. God takes our failures and turns them into new beginnings. God opens the doors that we thought were shut. Or as Maria says, in the sound of music, the musical, when the Lord closes a door, he opens a window. Maria's story is a perfect example of how God surprises us and takes what we think is failure and turns it into opportunity. If you aren't familiar with this beloved musical, which you should just go watch it. It's a great film for the whole family. It's perfect for Easter. It's on Disney Plus, check it out. Well, anyways, if the plot is that Maria's dream is to be a nun and she is deeply devoted to God and charity, but she just isn't quite cut out to be a nun with their discipline and rigor. The Abbey sends her to be a governess to the Von Trapp family. And this is hoping that she'll do some discernment and see what her calling really is. So in her failure to becoming a nun, Maria becomes an excellent parent. She ends up raising the children with love and care and patience and courage, even through their harrowing journey out of Austria to escape the Nazis. God turned Maria's failure into new opportunity. Through the musical, her story lives on. It's still being told and inspiring many people to climb every mountain and face life's obstacles with courage and love. How is your story still unfolding? How is God taking what once was dead and making you alive again? God will continue to be faithful and surprise us. So let us celebrate that Christ is risen. Let us celebrate that God is faithful. Let us celebrate that God surprises us with the unexpected. And let us celebrate that we are also a part of God's great love story. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Living God, hear our prayer. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Living God, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Living God, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Living God, hear our prayer. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill assemblies with joy as we are called your beloved through baptism. Multiply that joy that we share in our homes, at work, and through our community. Living God, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life through Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always, and also with you. 
thank you for supporting the mission and ministry of St. Paul, St. John's, and Emmanuel Lutheran Churches. Your partnership in the gospel through giving, through service, and through prayer make an immense difference in our community of faith and the lives of those around us. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us forth in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. We praise you for creating the earth. We praise you for delivering the Israelites. We praise you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one, and for the death and resurrection of Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life. Through Jesus, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, eat, and be satisfied. i 
heart could fathom such boundless grace. The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.